Hello and welcome to Be a Tier, the German Engineer. Explains, oxygen not included. Yes, today we are finally back and you can see it in front of us. We are going to talk about filters. Well, not exactly the filters we see in front of us, but of course mechanical filters. But since we are already here, let's take a quick look what we have going on. In our F2 overlay, right here we can see it. we have a gas filter on the left and over here on the right we have a liquid filter. And each and every one of those filters uses 100 and 20 watts of power and that is exactly what we are trying to stop if you go back into our f7 overlay we can see what's going on i have a tiny little room right here and this room contains oxygen as well as hydrogen we also have a pump in here and this pump pumps both gases out in a of course completely random manner and then down here we have our filter and our filter is currently set to hydrogen therefore the hydrogen is coming out of the golden output and it's going over to the right and back into the room everything else which is in this case of course oxygen goes over to the left and also back into the room this is of course only for demonstration purposes but you can see this is the basic principle of how a filter works the very same thing is true over here on the right just in this case here we have petroleum as well as crude oil and right here our filter works in the exact same way. How can we do that without using 120 watts of power? Let's take a look. To understand how mechanical filters work, first of all we need to talk about the basics and the basics are right here in front of us. We can see it in F7, we have a gas pipe loop over here on the left which is completely empty and in F6 we have the same thing just with liquid pipes over here on the right. But Let's take a look at the gases first. Right at the moment, I have a pump down here, and this pump is going to put out one kilogram of oxygen per second. And if I play the game, it's going right to this intersection right here, and it's going to stop. And the reason for it is, when we take a look here, it has nowhere to go. And even if I go ahead and I snip it off something like this here, it doesn't make a difference because the gas still has no output, and it doesn't know what to do. So... Let's help it out a little bit. I'm going to connect this here back up. And instead, I'm just going to plop in a gas bridge. And for the gas bridge, of course, right here in the middle, we need to get rid of this one piece. But if I now play the game, yes, the gas has now somewhere to go. And it is going to go in a loop. And we will see this here very shortly, because if I now snip our input off, we are still moving. And this is a very nice mechanic all by itself. Because with a loop like this here, we can create motion without using any energy. And now that our oxygen is coming back around, I'm going to connect it back up and we will see what is going to happen i'm gonna speed it up a little bit there we go we're gonna fill our loop and we're just gonna go around and around isn't that nice and now what happened well we have a problem now let me snip off the input right here and let's take a look we have our gas bridge right here on the left side we have 1000 grams of oxygen and on the right side we also have a thousand grams of oxygen which means that our gas over here on the left cannot go to the right because this place here is already filled so how can we fix it well if we remove any single tile something just like this here now we have one less in there and now it actually works and this here will just loop forever but that is not it because over on F6, it is the exact same thing. The water stops right there. I'm going to grab a bridge and I'm going to plop the bridge this time on the top. And before our water gets up there, I'm going to deconstruct that one piece right here underneath the bridge. And then we're going to play the game again. And we can see it. Yes, of course, we are doing the exact same thing. It works the same with gases and with liquids. That is all I'm trying to show you guys right here. Because right now, we are going to deconstruct this here. We're going to plop it back in. And once again, it's working just like before. Now. Now, what can we do with this knowledge? Let's take a look. Right here in front of us, I have two pipes. And if I press F7, we can see on the bottom we have 300 grams of oxygen per second. And on the top, we have 500 grams. So, what can we do with this? Well, we could, for example, just connect them and see what happens. And we can see every other tile is going up to the top and it's getting merged into a tile that has currently 500 grams in it. And of course, it's coming out at 800 grams. Once again, every other tile. That is it. The other one is going straight along. No problem at all. So now if I get rid of this here, and I'm replacing the normal pipe with a bridge, something like this here. It's not going to be every other tile anymore. Now it's every single tile. And we are going to once again merge the 300 grams on the bottom with the 500 grams up top. And we are getting out 800 grams of oxygen. So can we use this here a little bit differently? Let me change the setup just slightly. And now our setup is slightly changed. We can see it up here on the top. I have 100 milligrams or 0.1 grams of oxygen coming through here every single second. And down here on the bottom, we have 600 grams of oxygen followed by 600 grams of chlorine and so on and so forth. It's alternating just like that. 
But what exactly can we do with this knowledge? Well, we can of course plop in another pipe and that is exactly what we are going to do. So let's plop one in and let's see what happens. And yeah, look at it, just like that we have basically created a filter. Up here on the top we have oxygen in it, every single tile has something in it, in this case of course 0.1 grams of oxygen, and on the bottom we have this chlorine, and chlorine cannot be in the same tile as oxygen, that is not how the game works, and therefore only the oxygen from the bottom can merge up to the top. And so we created a filter just by building a pipe. But it of course only works with this very specific setup right here. It is gonna be a little bit harder in a real game. So what can we do about that? Let's see. Now that I've got rid of a piece of pipe up here on the top, we can take a look what we can do about this now. So let me show you. We have something right here in the ventilation overlay that is called a gas valve. And the gas valve has an input and an output and we can turn it in whatever direction we want. In this case right here, there's only one right direction. And that direction is the input side, the white side, has to be in the direction from which the gas is coming. So from our point of view, it's got to be on the left. We're going to move it one tile up and we're going to plop it right there. Now, what are we going to do is we're going to grab some gas pipes and the gas pipes are going around like this. Next on the list, is we need to change the flow control over here to 0.1 grams per second. Right now for me it's gonna be instant. In a real game a dupe has to do that. Keep that in mind. And now we need to do something that is called priming. And for priming it all we're gonna do is we're gonna come with this gas pipe into right here and those 100 milligrams of oxygen are just going to fill our loop. And we can see that right now it's gonna go in and now we are gonna go around. And more and more is going in. We don't really want that. Doesn't really matter either though. But we're gonna cut it off and actually just to make it a little bit more visual right here i'm gonna get rid of it completely now that we have this here we need an output because the gas that we put in here needs to go somewhere and this input right here is also going to be our output therefore i'm gonna grab a pipe and i'm just gonna connect it to the other side of the pipe over here on the right and last but not least now we can plop in a gas bridge and the gas bridge is gonna go right there and now we have basically built the exact same thing that we saw with our second pipe, just that we can do it whenever and wherever we want. And it works just like before. We still have our chlorine on the bottom and up here on the top, we have our wonderful, wonderful oxygen coming out in the exact same speed. Isn't that nice? But there is one problem with the system that we definitely have to talk about. So let me show you. I have now changed the composition of the bottom pipe and we can see 1000 grams of oxygen are coming along and that is exactly where our system breaks. You can see it, now we have 100 milligrams of oxygen left over. So why is that? Well if you think about it logically, 1000 grams is exactly how much a gas pipe can hold and we have 1000 grams right here. We are trying to merge those 1000 grams with another 0.1 grams. Well of course that is not possible, we cannot physically do it because the max maximum is 1000. Therefore, those leftover 0.1 milligrams gotta go somewhere and that somewhere is along our bottom pipe. But there is a simple fix for it. And that simple fix looks like that. We just plop in a second bridge. So the 999.9 grams are going into the left pipe and the leftover 0.1 grams are going into the right. So let's turn it on and we will see it immediately. Now we are back where we started, even though we have the occasional 1000 gram package in here and now we can actually handle it. And those are the basics of how a mechanical filter works. The example here is fully in gas, but it works the exact same way with liquid pipes. And the only difference is with liquid pipes, you have a maximum amount of 10 kilograms instead of one kilogram in the pipe. But let's take a look at some more practical examples. Right here we have the exact same boxes that we saw just a tiny little bit ago in our F7. We can see it once again we have oxygen and hydrogen and in F6 on the right side we have crude oil as well as petroleum. But the difference this time is in F2 we can see it we are not using those extra 120 watts of power because we have our mechanical filters in place. And now when we take a look at it we can see it not in F5 but in F7 of course it works the exact same way. We have our two bridges on the top and on the bottom and we are feeding it into this loop and this loop here also has 100 milligrams of hydrogen in it and it works the exact same way so we can build this wherever we want 
And the same, of course, on the right side over here. I only have one bridge and the reason for it is that I plopped another liquid valve in front of the input to make sure that we never have more than 9,999 grams in our pipe because our liquid pump here actually fills the pipe up all by itself where a gas pump cannot do that. So we need to be a little bit more careful. And in this case right here, a liquid valve will solve that problem for us without an issue. But it also helps us in the way that we don't need a second bridge. But the question is, how do we prime? a system like that. Let's take a look at that as well. Right here I have the exact same build one more time but when we take a closer look you can see in F7 I have the two output pipes right here cut off and in F2 we also don't have any power. And that is exactly how you would build this system in a real game. You would have your dupes build it all and then you just do not turn it on until you're ready. You're gonna make sure that your gas valve right here is set to 0.1 grams and of course the liquid valve on the right should also be set to 0.1 grams. Now let's get started with the left side right here in order to start it up. I'm going to pause the game and I'm going to reconnect this wire. And of course this here would work in your game the exact same way. I only snipped it off so even without death mode and without sandbox you could just connect it up without a dupe being nearby. Now what we can do is in F7, we're just going to watch it. We're going to play the game and we're going to watch for the first package. And the first package is wonderful hydrogen. The moment we see it, we're just going to snip it off. And we're going to make sure that we only have hydrogen and nothing else. Or oxygen. The problem is with this version of priming it that we don't have control over it. What is going into our filter? Whatever the pump sucks up. That is what's going into our filter and that is exactly what we are going to do right now. I'm just going to let it run and we can see slowly but steadily we are going to fill our loop. And the moment our loop is filled right now, we can just pause the game. We can connect this back up, this back up and this back up. And right now we have a working system. This is the easiest way to prime your filter. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. I can play it as fast as I want and we will never have a problem with this system here at all. Isn't that nice and straightforward? I honestly love it and I actually underutilize it way too much because usually I have so much power that it doesn't matter and I just plop in a normal filter and call it a day. But of course, this is a very viable thing and I highly recommend it. And now over here to our liquid version, it works of course the exact same way, just that I forgot to snip it off right here and right there. I'm gonna snip it and that should get the job done. Now I'm gonna pause the game, hook up our power, go back into the F6 overlay, connect this pipe right here not entirely sure why i snipped that one off let's see what we get and the first thing coming out is crude oil we're gonna snip it off our crude oil is in our crude oil is going through the first liquid valve into the loop and as soon as it's in the loop it's gonna come to the filter and the filter is gonna spit out 0.1 grams per second until the loop is full and now we're good to go all we have to do is connect this pipe connect this pipe and connect this pipe and then give it full force and immediately we can see it we don't have a problem whatsoever. And yes, it's literally just simple. It may be hard to believe, but that is exactly how it works. And I hope you have fun with this build. But of course, there are a few more things I want to show you. Right here in front of us, I have another box and this box is this time filled with four different gases and four we can see it. We have hydrogen, we have chlorine, we have carbon dioxide and of course we have also oxygen. And when we take a look into our F7 overlay, we can see I have one, two, three and four filters with one separate exit. And you can see it right away. If I only have four gases with four filters, why should there ever anything come out on the bottom left? Well, we just saw it happen, didn't we? And if I turn the speed back up, we will see it happen again. It's just a question of time. So let's see uh, if I speed it up. Yeah, right there. We have a tiny little piece coming out and another one right there. And can we get another one for good measure? Yes, here we have some oxygen as well. So why is that? Well, this right here is how to not do it. Once again, I repeat, this is the wrong way of how to build it. And we can see the orientation of our gas in our filters right here. We are going in on the right side and we are rotating the wrong way around. And as I said earlier, our valve right here has to look with the input into the direction where the gas is coming from. And in this case right here, you can clearly see it. We are pointing not to the right, we are pointing to the left, to the left, to the left, and once again to the left. And that is of course not how it works, because with this build right here, we cannot compensate for big amounts of gas at once. Therefore, we need to turn them around. Let me show you, and I guarantee you, it will work a hell of a lot better. 
And right here we have the exact same build again, but we can see it right away. Our inputs are all facing towards the right. Therefore, this system here is built correctly. So even if I turn the speed up to full speed, just take a look down here on the bottom left and you will never ever see a single piece of gas down there. And that is exactly what it should be. And that's why it is so highly, highly important to have those inputs facing into the direction the gas is coming from. And you should never have a problem with that. But what are we going to do now with this thing down here on the bottom left well let's take a look right here we have the exact same build one more time but this time we have a difference in the composition because we have still once again our oxygen we have our carbon dioxide we have a little bit of chlorine in here even though i'm not entirely sure what happened with it but we also have hydrogen but this time i added natural gas and if we go into our f7 overlay and when we let it run we can see it everything that's coming through here is being filtered out of course with the exception of our natural gas so this build here is actually capable of filtering out a total of five gas and the only reason that I built it so big is that you guys can actually see it. Of course, you can compress this here completely together and have them side by side. And you can always use that very small version you see on the right and on the left compared to the bigger ones in the middle. Again, just to show you how it works, that is why I built it so big apart. There is no necessity to it. But how would we prime a system like that? Well, we have two methods and we are going to take a look at each one of them. Right here in front of us, we have that same exact build once again, but this time once again with four gases instead of five. But it doesn't make a difference because when we go into our F7 overlay, you can see that I have snipped off all of our outputs. And we are going to fill the big version the exact same way that we filled the small version. So let's do precisely that. I'm going to hook up our power, go back into the F7 overlay, and let's see what we are going to get first. We have chlorine on the menu. All right, we're going to snip it off. It can be two packets of chlorine, it doesn't make a difference. As long as it's the same gas, that's totally fine. And now our chlorine is done, which means we can hook this here up and this here as well. Now we need another gas and right here we have carbon dioxide. So we're going to snip it off once again. The carbon dioxide is not going into here, but it's going into right there. As soon as the loop is full, we're going to connect it and we're going to connect the right side as well. Now we have our wonderful oxygen right here. Let's snip it off just so we can move it through here very nicely and we can follow it. That is not even necessary to snip it off anymore at this point, but we're going to do it for a good measure. And now we shouldn't have a problem anymore at all because the last remaining gas right here is hydrogen. Therefore, nothing else is going to come over here other than hydrogen. Just got to hook up our output. And once again, right now we have a very wonderfully functioning mechanical filter. And once again, the only amount of power we are using is our pump. And unfortunately, there is no way around that. But let's watch it once again in our F7 overlay. It works just like a charm. No problem whatsoever. And last but not least, if we are a little bit more picky where our output is going, we can do it with this method right here. In our F7 overlay, we can see it. I snipped off all the connections to each other and I connected some wonderful gas bridges right here. That is all we need. They're not yet connected to anything, but let's say on the right side here, we were able to gather some hydrogen and it's currently in our pipe, just like our carbon dioxide. Of course, this makes our life extremely easy. We can just connect this here, something like that. We can play the game. All we need is one package we can have more than that of course we can just let it go in but we can also have the one package or two packages doesn't make a difference once again snip it off now our hydrogen is going to go around and around just like before we hook up our output and we are ready to roll it's literally this simple and that is how we prime this here with a gas that we know of and once again just this time in full real time there we go snip it off let it get in there then as soon as we have it in there we are going to connect our output pipe and we are ready to roll. But what if we don't have this luxury right here? Let's say we have, I don't know, let's take some oxygen, for example, and let's just take 50 kilograms of it and let's plop it right there. And then let's grab us, let's say up here, what is the other one that we need? Yep, right there, we need chlorine gas. Let's make it another 50 kilograms and plop it right there. In our F4 overlay, we can see it. Now we have a room filled with both of those gases and they're going to mingle a little bit and it's not gonna be the most prettiest thing in the world, but we're gonna wait just a tiny little bit until this here has properly mixed. Well, a little bit of time has passed. It's still not necessarily properly mixed, but it will do for our purposes because what we are going to do is we are going to turn on the power, something like this here, and then we're going to take a look into our pipes. Don't forget that they're still not connected up here to the top. So, okay, 
On the left side right here, we have wonderful, wonderful chlorine and on the right side as well. And here we have our first package of oxygen. So what can we do? We could, for example, let's say the right side right here is our chlorine. That's fine. So it literally doesn't matter. We can just snip it off right there. But the left side over here, we want oxygen. So we need to snip it off below the oxygen and then we can keep on running. All this here will solve itself very shortly and now it is done. Now what we can do is we can use our empty pipe tool right here. Of course in an actual game a dupe would come by and do it. Of course in death mode if I click on it it will be instant. So it happens and of course right now our second piece of chlorine is now in the top. Therefore, I'm going to pause the game again. I'm going to empty the pipe one more time. Now the gas content is empty and now we have oxygen. So on the left side, we have oxygen. On the right side, we have chlorine. And now, same as before, we just can connect both of them up. Here's our chlorine. Here's our oxygen. It goes into the pipes. It's going to rotate around. Then we can disconnect our pipes right here again. And now all we have left to do is connect the output pipes right here and right there. And then, of course, the through pipes all along here here and then last but not least a little bit of power then f2 yeah that sure looks good and in f7 we should be able to see it now right away and it will work just like before there's no difference just in this case here it takes a little bit more work if you do care which filter filters out what usually you probably wouldn't build four in a row but there is absolutely nothing stopping you from doing so Right here is another version of a filter that I want to show you guys. In this case here, it does have one tiny little downside. And that downside is that we are actually using power. Yes, but there are many upsides. But let me go over it first. We have a gas pipe element sensor on the left and we have a gas shutoff right beside it. And that is highly important. They cannot be further apart than that. So what does it do and how does it work? Well, first of all, it is, of course, connected together with an automation wire. Can't forget to mention that. And and then once again in F2, it does use power. And what is using power? It's actually the gas shutoff and not the gas pipe element sensor. The nice thing about this system here is that I can change it whenever I want without the interaction of a dupe. Let's say right here, we are currently feeding oxygen in. But oxygen, of course, let's say we are running out over here on the left. We don't have any more. But all of a sudden, we are getting, I don't know, polluted oxygen. All I have to do is flip this switch right here. And now we are filtering polluted oxygen and not oxygen oxygen anymore so I can switch it whenever I want and that is a really nice option to have but that is not the only benefit because you can see it I have a filter here a filter there a filter here and over here on the right I do not have a filter at all because I have four gases and to filter four gases I only need three filters because the fourth gas is automatically land at the output that of course makes logically sense, but at the same time, it does hinder us a little bit on expandability. And now you're probably wondering, what do you mean? Well, let's take a look. And right here, yes, right there we have it. When I turn it on, we can see it. it's the exact same system. It has the exact same gases in it, the exact same gas shutoffs. I just didn't put any pumps in here because it doesn't matter for this build. But over here on the right, I have an extra filter. And now you're probably wondering, why would you build an extra filter if you don't need it? You only have four gases. Well, when we take a look into our F7 overlay, we can see it right here. I expanded the pipe and I also extended the power wire. Because if we now get a fifth gas, let's say, yeah, we are having a fifth gas. Let's say it's polluted oxygen that we want to filter out. And we would really like to put it into an infinite storage just like the rest. Well, all we have to do is come over here with our dupes, build us another box just like that. Into this box, we're going to put us another gas shutoff, another gas pipe sensor, another high pressure vent. Of course, my little bit of wire so we can come in. And once again, for expandability, we're going to go all the way over to the right. And then F7, we're going to do the exact same thing with the gas pipe. And down here on the bottom, we will need a piece as well. And now we can set this here already to polluted oxygen so we don't forget it later. And of course, a little bit of an automation wire as well. Now there are only two things missing. You would do that in a real game, of course, with the help of a bottle emptier through the top. I'm just going to sample our crude oil over here and then brush it over here onto the right. And for the vacuum creation in here, you would already have a pump because presumably all the gases you're putting in here, eventually you might want to get them back out and therefore you will need a pump. Even two pumps would be possible if you put it just one tile bigger. But at the moment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill and I'm just going to say vacuum, not VC, but VAC. There we go. And there we have a vacuum. Isn't that nice and simple? And now we can run it. And while we are running it, 
plopping in another dev gas pump right here and then we're gonna connect it up and we are going to set it of course to our polluted oxygen now it should take just a second or so let's see that is still oxygen still oxygen still oxygen come on how much oxygen is in there get out of there there we have it our first polluted oxygen is coming through and it's moving all the way over to the right and of course it ends up in here and in a real game this is how fast you could build an infinite storage with a built-in filter and theoretically every single gas in your base could be coming through this one single pipe right here isn't that nice to know but of course that is not all one more thing to go and then we will call it a day and right here in front of us last but not least for today we have well another box who could have seen it coming so let's take a look what's going on here it's a box that's mainly filled with oxygen and there are some other gases in here like chlorine natural gas and carbon dioxide and i'm just feeding them in from the top now what we are trying to do is we are trying to get the oxygen out of here only the oxygen all the rest should stay where it is because we don't need it so how could we do it well this is where one of my favorite mods of all time comes in and that mod is is called smart pumps so let's take a look at ventilation we have a filter gas pump right here and of course we also have one in plumbing that's called a filtered liquid pump when we take another look at the filter gas pump it does cost some refined metal and of course also plastic therefore it is certainly not an early game build but once you can access it it's one of my favorite things so let's see why it is it looks like a normal gas pump like all the others and all we have to do is we can just plop it anywhere let's say right here and then we need two things first of all of course we need an output gas pipe just anywhere it doesn't matter let's plop a high pressure gas vent on it and of course power and it uses 240 watts of power just like a standard pump there's no difference so far but now when i play the game nothing is happening because it says here no configured gas to pump so let's pause it one more time and let's take a look here and of course we have our very familiar filter menu right here and i can set it to whatever i want in my case that's oxygen and then let's go into the f7 overlay and let's let it run and now I can be 100% sure that nothing is going to leave this area here, at least not through this pipe, other than oxygen. And this pump here will now just pump until there is no more oxygen to be found for it. Isn't that nice? That is exactly what that should look like. And for especially the late game, it makes your life so much easier. If you may just need one gas of the many mixed gases that you have at the bottom of your base, this here is the building to do it. And that's why I highly recommend this mod. And once again, the link is of course in the description down below to this mod. But that is all I have for you today. So if you enjoy my content, please subscribe to my channel, leave a like on the video and of course comment down below. You know it, I'm always happy to hear from you. And with that I say thank you and peace.